Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the PC Elitist. My name is Woodsy. My name is Shepard. And Shepard, one night, was bored. And when Shepard gets bored, Magic shit happens. happens. <laughs> <laughs> shit gets real. <laughs> right. So, tell us about your evening. Sure. Well, I was on Metacritic looking up uh, scores for Terra because I was interested in seeing what you all were saying about it. Uh, even though I you asked just wanted you... to join the flock, right? Exactly. Even though I asked you all, when I say you all, I mean like all 13 of you on Twitter, um, <laughs> if any of you had any thoughts on Terra. Didn't get a response. Um, so I was checking out Terra, and I saw on the right-hand side there was an article uh, entitled something like Highest Rated PC Games of All Time, According to Metacritic. And I clicked on it, and it got me thinking, uh, because I had a huge list of all of the Metacritic games that, or all the PC games that Metacritic has ever reviewed, sorted by critic score, not user score. And it just got me thinking about, I want to take a look at these numbers, of uh, both critic and user scores, and see if I see if, if I notice any patterns. Now, before I go into any of this, let me just say that Metacritic is obviously not a representative sample. It's based solely on those people who chose to give a Metacritic review. Um, so I'm not saying that what I'm about to tell you all, the findings of my research, if you want to call it that, I'm not <laughs> saying that it is in any quantitative way proof of one thing or another. Take it with a huge grain of salt, but I thought it interesting, the patterns that I noticed. So with that being said, let's get into it. Of the critic scores, I decided to look at scores out of... Critic scores are out of 100, user scores are out of 10. I decided 94 and above qualifies as an elite game. Completely arbitrary... Just live with it. 94 <laughs> and above. And this is no. coming... Metacritic, we're talking about 96 is the highest score they've ever given. And that's Half-Life 2 and I think one other game. I'm not 100% sure. Um, so anything 94 or above, again, is an elite game. There were 17 instances in the history of PC gaming, in the history of Metacritic. Um, 17 instances of games that received 94 or above. Only three of them, which is 18%, only three of them came out within the last five years. So 82%, 14 out of these 17 games, are at least five years old. Six of them, which is about a third, are at least, pre or they came out pre-year 2000. So at least 12 years old. The only recent games, and by recent I mean the only three super elite games, according to Metacritic, in the last five years are Portal 2, Skyrim, and Mass Effect 2. Not Mass Effect 3, not Modern Warfare 3, not these games which are hyped to shit. <laughs> I just found that very interesting because you look at the critic scores for most of these games and it's 100, 100, 100, 100, 100 and then you have descending order maybe someone give it a 65 but they didn't get their copy, did they? They got it late yeah. so they're mad <laughs> right. at EA so I found that interesting that most of these games are at least 5 years old of the elite games according to Metacritic again within the small sample size the user scores are a little more interesting. Now, these are even a bigger grain of salt because we all know how gamers can review games. They love it or they hate it and they want their opinions to be known and they want to be, feel like they're important. Right. So they play games with the ratings that they give. But I found the numbers interesting nonetheless. In this instance, for a 9.4 or above considered an elite game, there were 87 instances of PC games getting that score. Um... Only 15% of those were um, were released pre-2000, but still, that's 13 games released pre-2000 that received a very high score. But again, that covers an entire decade, right? so that's not that surprising. Um, half of these games, 42 out of 87, about 48%, were released pre-2000, so that's a game that's at least 10 years old, 2002 or before. So half of the games that received this elite score, pretty old games. 77 out of 87, which is almost 89%. Almost 89% of games were released five plus years ago that received this high score. So what that means is that players have not been giving recent games elite scores. A big part of that is because people love to give tens, people love to give zeros. If those are an equal number of people, the game gets a five. Taking out every other score that gets there in the middle. Right. Um, because people love to throw in the line. Yes, exactly. I'm putting this to equal everything. Yeah, but just um, another breakdown I did was just by year, and I won't go through each and every year, but the real high point of elite game scores on Metacritic was 2001, 2002, 2003, and there were a total of, let me see here, 32 games. So about a little over a third of all of the highly rated games in Metacritic's history came in a three-year span from 01 to 03. And only um, 10 of them, sorry, only 6 of them since 2008. 
So a lot of numbers I'm throwing out there. If you heard half of it, you kind of get where I'm going with this. If you heard none of it, uh, go back and start over. It's okay. Everyone knows they should have pen and paper out and ready yes. when they click play on our School video. School is in session. <laughs> so based on this, and I must reiterate because I, I, do, I just want to combat right now any of you who are going to come out and talk about validity versus reliability. I was... My degree was in one of the social sciences. I studied psychology, <laughs> sociology, I studied research methods. I know this is not <laughs> this is not empirically sound. Right. Just get that out of the way. If you get I'm in a discussion for... with somebody, don't quote Shepard from the PCLS. Yes, exactly. If you do, then please send me a check for $300. <laughs> what I'm looking at is patterns. And I found it very interesting that most of the highly rated games came at least five years ago. Right. And another thing, just chronologically speaking, these the critic reviews come out when the game comes out. So those are contextual. The user reviews, I could rate Diablo 2 right now if I wanted to and affect the score. Um, but, so I mean, that I think that kind of balances out itself as well because if I, I could rate it now, say it's a great game, I could have rated it back then and said it's a great game. It right. still gets a good score nonetheless, no matter when it's rated. Right. Um, so some might say that, okay, well, Skyrim hasn't had enough time to get such a high score. Do you really think that in the next three or four years, enough people are going to give Skyrim an 8 or 9 or a 10 to drive the score up? I think those people who want to review Skyrim already have, right. and the reviews will be trickling in from here on out. I could be wrong, but I think that with enough people on the internet trying to, especially in the last couple of years, trying to give their opinion, the user scores in these games, right. I think enough people have spoken to where we're starting to see how people really feel, an aggregate of, you know, a couple hundred, couple thousand people. Do you think, can I ask a sure. question? Sure, yeah, I'm, I'm done. Do you think there's a, that there's an effect on the numbers of the only people who would recently go to uh, review an older game are the ones who love it in the first place? Most likely. I highly doubt that someone who never really cared to review, I'll just use Diablo 2 as the example, um, who never really cared to review it nor play it, I don't think they're suddenly going to go out and get the game in preparation for Diablo 3 and say, you know what, I don't really like this that much. It's an old game, it sucks. It's not as fun as you know one of the more modern games. I think you're right. Um, I think there could be any number of compounding variables here that are at right. play. But the, my point is, that doesn't matter because I don't care. I'm not trying to explain all of this. <laughs> my whole <laughs> right. purpose was to see what the pattern showed, and the pattern showed me that recent games, and again by recent I mean five years or less, recent games aren't being as highly rated. Is that is that a speaking to the quality of games, or is it speaking to the way people rate games? I don't know. It could be both. Could or do be we one expect the more from games? Yeah. Do we, do we expect more? Do we are expectations so high that when a game doesn't meet our potentially unrealistic expectations, we're more likely to give it a low score? I mean, we enjoyed Skyrim somewhat. I would never give it a zero. I would never give it less than a five. It was yeah. a good game. You have to be intellectually honest and go, this yeah. isn't a five. Uh, yeah, even if even if I played it and just hated the experience, I would still say this game does so many things well. Right. I cannot give it less than, you know, seven, whatever, you know, seven, eight. And again, that kind of speaks to being intellectually honest about having an argument about video games. Um, <laughs> right. And you can't really expect that from a lot of people, except from you all. Yeah. But we have a very special community. Yeah. And special is a good word when I use it. That's <laughs> you're not a, not short bus special. No. Yeah. Uh, you actually the, found the critic reviews more interesting than the. I think we can effectively write off most of what user scores say. I think user even user though scores, we tend to rely on them more than critic scores. Well, you know what? There's a there is a fun when I go to Metacritic, there. Uh, for me, I do like reading just the tops and the bottoms, mm -hmm. just the tens and the zeros, because I want to see where their reasoning. I hate this if, game. If, if any. If any. <laughs> and if this was, I hate this game because it didn't work on my computer, <laughs> then I could just write that off as not a good review. If And whatever it may be. And usually the guy who, usually, most people are not good writers, or don't think in a very measured way. Yeah. So when they put, I put a five. You know why? Because these developers worked really hard. And even though I may not have liked it that much, I think they deserve it. And something's bleeding heart bullcrap, <laughs> you know? So that's just, so the, the tops and the bottoms, 
I use it to give me an idea of what do people really love about this, mm. what do people really hate about it, and I can I've been playing games long enough to make a measured assessment of what's important and what's not. Yeah, I, I think that for all of the all of the tens, be they legitimate or be they you know complete fanboys, for all the zeros, and you can't really say any zero is legitimate because honestly, what game is a zero nowadays? Paint other, brawl. Other than Rogue, Rogue, <laughs> Rogue Warrior and Paint Brawl. <laughs> Um, and the Secret World beta, so far. Which I want to ask you about. Mike, we'll do a video on that. My God, is that disappointing. <laughs> do, do we do we put them through footage of it? Yeah, we'll, we'll make it a short one. <laughs> okay. But, oh my God. That... <sighs> anyway. Yeah, w what game is a zero? So I feel like the tens and zeros, even if they kind of cancel each other out. What game is a ten, really? Yeah. Also good point. But I like to read them more in the you know four, five, six reviews, just because I I want to see. Frankly, I read the zeros and tens for humor, and I read the four, five, six for substance. You also find some crazies in there. They're just crazies who aren't violent with their opinions. Right. It's, I didn't like this game at all, but that's just me. And yeah. The, and then I was like, oh, this guy's a pretty measured thinker. And then he'll say, oh, and by the way, the developers are gay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thanks. Good to know. Yeah. Uh, two other quick things just to, to sprinkle a little fairy dust on this conversation. I also thought I'd look at the extreme scores. That's a good segue. Yes, it is. Gay developers to fairy dust? No? Okay. Not sorry. intentional. <laughs> the extremes. I wanted to see what the highest and lowest rated games of all time were according to Metacritic. Now the highest, I, the highest rated critic score is Half-Life 2. So I'm not going to talk about that because it, there's no humor there. Best game ever! The highest user-rated PC games of all time both got a 9.8, according to users. However, the first one, only four people reviewed it, and the average was 9.8. <laughs> the second one, only six people. Highest-rated game of all time, for number one, Zoo Tycoon, Marine Mania. <laughs> Came out in 2002, and for each of these, I took a quote from one of the reviews. This one is, quote, The gameplay is incredible. There are many cheats, including putting a mermaid statue in a tank. <laughs> End quote. <laughs> I know. The second highest rate, or tied for the highest rated game of all time, Big Scale Racing, also 2002. Quote from the of a reviewer, simply great. <laughs> the lowest rated games of all time, one user, one critic. Lowest rated user score ever was a 0 0.8 out of 10. Terra Wars, New York Invasion, 2006. <laughs> quote, this game was horrible, one of the worst games ever made. Nice. End quote. And critics lowest ever big rigs over the road racing, which literally is racing semi trucks <laughs> with their containers attached. Got an eight out of a one hundred. Came out in two thousand three. Quote: This game, this is hands down the worst video game to ever see the light of day. Really. <laughs> Those are the highs and lows for you. So you can give a game like that a zero. Don't give Skyrim a zero. Don't give Cataclysm a zero. Right. Give me a break. <laughs> and you know me I tend to not read the critic reviews because there isn't much to be learned there I like to go to the user reviews to see how other gamers find it but it's hard to take any of these scores seriously when Did you we... see and it's usually when you see the grammar and the spelling right um, but <sighs> did we ever talk about the idea of of, of uh, professional reviewers that the fact that they get the game for free that it skews their we did we yeah. also talked about the fact that if you I mean, this isn't, you know, I don't have some insider information, but I don't think it's beyond the realm of belief to say that if I give EA's games five bad reviews in a row, they're not going to send me the game in advance for free the next time. Maybe not. Maybe not. We did d discuss that in one of our previous 50-some videos. Right. Turtles, your mission, go find which video that was. <laughs> Report back, let me know. Because you're sending turtles on errands now? <laughs> no, it's a mission. Oh, Not an whoa. errand. An errand is, hey, turtles, I'm thirsty. <laughs> I would not do that to him. He's okay. loyal, and he's awesome. Okay. We're not going to take advantage. No. Okay. Frosty, get me a beverage. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway, so you all know what my question is. Your thoughts, please. Please. Post them below and subscribe if you like this video. Thumbs it up, please, if you watch the entire thing. You yeah, just... if you made it this far, God bless you. <laughs> my name is Woodsy. My name is Shepard. We are the PC Elitists, and we're signing out.